Welcome to that groovy scoop cast, your go-to audio hub for all things. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. Sir, you're really lucky. This group of scoop casters is wanted in 27 states and half the kennels in North America. Flim Flam, take them away. We're sending them up the river. But, but I can't swim. Welcome back, guys, to That Groovy Scoopcast. My name is Derek. And I'm Shannon. And this is our 50th episode. Woohoo! That's pretty cool. It is. I'm also really upset that this is the episode we're doing for our 50th episode. I was really disappointed in this episode. But given... we've made it to 50. Yes. It's been very fun. Yeah. And we shall continue to have fun. It's been a good time. Even when we hate these episodes. Yes. Uh, today we are watching an episode from The 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, that being Reflections in a Ghoulish Eye. Shannon, I think you already kind of spoiled your thoughts on this episode a little bit, <laughs> but care to elaborate a bit before we begin our Mystery Machine match? So, it was just a weird 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo episode. We do genuinely like this series most of the time. Well, I'd argue based on our previous scores that we've done that we've progressively begun to not like. Yeah, that's fair. I don't know, like, we have fun during the episodes usually. Even if we hate them, we still laugh at it. But this one was just so bad. Like, I kept just giving you looks throughout the yeah. episode. Like, wait, what? It was like, just, the, it was very off-brand almost. It was, the transitions were weird. Just everything was very off. And it's strange to me because if I were to watch... The first episode of this series and compare it to this one. Oh, it's the... such a stark difference. Yeah. And this is only the fourth episode of it. They've so, already like, given what? up. They already <laughs> gave up. Like, so quick. <laughs> but we are going to kick off the Mystery Machine match before we continue talking about this episode. This is our weekly trivia competition where Shannon and I try to figure out which one of us knows Scooby-Doo better than the other. Last week we finished our scores with me with 12 points and Shannon with 10 I took the lead, and I intend to keep the lead. (laughs) Thanks. Shannon, as always, you can go first today with your question. Where are Shaggy, Scooby-Doo, and Scrappy panning for gold when they meet the ice monster? Siberia or the Yukon? I think they're in the Yukon. Yeah. Was I right? Mm Awesome. Awesome. Uh, here's your first question. Who does Scooby-Doo pretend to be in the Chiller Diller movie thriller? Mm-hmm. I will... Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't give you <laughs> options, but based on the answer, I will make up another one for okay. you. Okay. So it's either he pretends to be his cousin Scooby-Dumb, or he pretends to be his cousin scooby D. Read the question one more time. Who does Scooby-Doo pretend to be in the Chiller Diller movie thriller? Scooby D. You are correct. What's your next question? Sarah Michelle Geller, who played Daphne in the Scooby Doo movie, also starred in a teen horror movie oh called I Know What You Did Last Blank. I Know What You Did Last Summer? Yeah. Yay! Woohoo! <laughs> Here's your next question Whose father gave money to start Mystery Incorporated? Daphne? Yep. Okay, I'm like, uh, the only option. <laughs> <laughs> What's your last question? Who is one of the hosts of the Scooby-Doo All-Star Laugh Olympics? Mildew Wolf or Mangy Mutt? Um, that's tough. I know Snagglepuss is one of them. Um, I'm going to go with Mildew Wolf. Yeah. Was it right? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Cool. That was a guess, too. Here is your last question. How many volts is the ghost the gang encounters in What a Shocking Ghost? I will give you a hint for this. This is the electric monster that we see in the Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed movie. I know his name. I just can't think of it. Because it's in his name. Yeah. And, like, the electric ghost is the only thing that's popping into my head. Yeah, the something vault ghost. That's a number. I know. It's it's either one thousand or like four thousand or something. Is it one the one thousand volt ghost? No, the ten thousand volt ghost. Yep. <laughs> I was like, it's got zeros in it. <laughs> yeah, it was ten thousand volt ghost. Yep. 
I'm glad you got it. I worked through that so long. 1,000? 4,000? 10,000. So it looks like all three of our questions to each other were answered correctly today. Woohoo! So I am now at 15 points. You are at 13. I I'll still maintain there. my lead, but you you fought. You fought today. Good for you. really hard. <laughs> <laughs> so you ready to move on to our review? Yes. Okay. So like we said before, we are watching Reflections in a Ghoulish Eye from the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Here is a premise for this episode coming from Scoobypedia. While visiting a Moroccan paranormal convention, the gang has to stop a mirror demon. Okay, kind of. Because they weren't, like, attending it. They got a telegram from the ghosts. They showed up. It happened to be a paranormal. Well, they thought that it was from Vincent. So they just assumed, hey, like... Let's go. Let's go, because there probably is a ghost there. But they didn't know that there was a convention going on until they got there. Yeah, no, the convention wasn't Because then the do. camels got really angry. <laughs> so let's let's start real quick. <laughs> so um, we open to Vincent Van Gogh's face. That's the first thing we see. I'm like, oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> and um, yeah, so he's just narrating like he does. Uh, he says that they are in Marrakesh, which is where the Swamis dwell. I don't know what that means, but it seems a little racist. <laughs> Um, so the gang is on their way to Marrakesh in Morocco. They are, you know, following the telegram that they believe they've gotten from Vincent. And, uh, they are staying at the Marrakesh Hotel. Like you just said, there is incidentally a paranormal convention that's also taking place there. They park and there's a bunch of camels that are behind them who are pissed because you're not supposed to park vehicles there. That area is only for camel drop off and... You know. And I think she called it the wide zone. I wasn't... Re- I, yeah, I I couldn't figure out what they were saying. I do know that Scrappy got super excited about the fact that they were at a paranormal convention. And he instantly goes inside to interrogate all of the guests in the hotel lobby. As to whether or not they know or have any association with the ghosts they're hunting. Which, here's my thing. I don't even know how they like mentally prepare to take on these ghosts. Because they're all so different from each other. Yeah. So, like, let's take a little bit of a step back. So, our first episode where we saw a ghost from the chest was the Maldor the Malevolent. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he was able to alter reality, and he grew super big, and he had he the, should have been the, last the crazy ghost horns. Because he was badass. Yeah, so far he has been the best one. And then we had uh, Queen Morbidia, the vampire queen woman who Wasn't just sucked. Shit, yeah. I hated her. Um... So, in this episode, we have the mirror demon. We will just kind of do a description, I guess, Mm -hmm. of what he looks like. Shannon kept saying throughout the episode that he looked like a dragon. Okay, so, like, because throughout the entire episode, you only really see, like, his eyes and, like, a bit of the top of his head. Crops through the image of the mirror that he's trapped in. Yeah. So, he looked very big, and just, like, the way that his, I don't know what, like, the bone above your eye is called. Just in his eye socket. Yeah, yeah. like the bo- like that whole, like his bone structure just had like a very dragon-like to it. And every time he'd pop out, like it was just, like just his head looked like a dragon. The rest of him looked like a malnourished animal. He is like completely blue. His body's blue, red eyes. Ugly. Very ugly. He has like a really jagged Look texture to, it, yeah. to him. Yeah. He likes to yowl a lot. Mm-hmm. And from what we can understand, he, I'm curious, like, did the mirror come out of the chest with him, or does he just have the ability to inhabit mirrors? I felt like that mirror was special to him. Okay, because, you know, because it didn't melt at the end of the episode. I have problems with that, but we'll address it when it comes. So, back to, like the chain of events in this episode. The gang finds a concierge who stops Scrappy from harassing the other guests, rightfully so. The guest that Scrappy was harassing at the time was dressed exactly like the concierge. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of funny. Yes. Daphne gives him the name that they're under the party for Scooby-Doo. And the concierge persona changes 100%. He's so excited to have the all-famous, world-renowned Scooby-Doo at his hotel. Which I guess is just reinforcing this idea that we've gotten from a few episodes ago that Scooby is just famous in I this guess. universe now. I don't now. know how or why, though. Right, because I'm thinking back to, like, Scooby-Doo, where are you? And they were just a bunch of just teenagers and a dog yeah. in, you know, the middle of nowhere, Ohio, well, and, solving local mysteries. And what's the excuse? Where are Daphne and Fred right... Or where are Velma and Fred right now? In the Mystery Incorporated timeline... 
Fred was at summer camp. And I don't remember Velma's excuse in the Curse of the Thirteen Ghost mystery movie. Okay. I don't remember. But like, so Sco- They're not there. No, I, yeah. no, I know that. But I'm thinking, like, so Scooby's famous, so obviously the rest of the gang has to be famous, too. At least they're just, like... Somehow? Yeah, yeah. like, by association, like, they know the name. So imagine, like, being a huge fan of Scooby-Doo, going to summer camp, and Fred Jones is there. Like... Among the, any of the members you could have met, yeah. you only meet Fred. It's like, oh. Well, and also, like, you'd kind of lose your shit a little bit because you'd just be like, oh, my God, a famous person. I mean, I guess a famous person, but, like, not the no. most famous person in the group. You know what I mean? <laughs> It'd be like going somewhere, and instead of Taylor Swift, you just meet her cats. <laughs> like, I'm still kind of excited, what? but, like. That's not the first analogy <laughs> I would have compared that to, but Okay. So they're, like, about to get checked into their room. They are given room 1313. Yeah. You know, just kind of going along with that 13 motif of the series. Um, They are told that their room's not ready yet. So, like, in that case, don't give them the key. Yeah. You know? That was kind of weird. Because I don't think he gave them a time when it would be ready. Meanwhile, we cut over to see Weird and Bogle, which this is the first time we've seen them since the first episode of the series. Yeah. We haven't seen them since season one of our podcast, so... Um, <laughs> That's crazy. Isn't it to, to think about? Like, yeah, and then we reviewed the first episode of The 13 Ghosts in July last year. Yeah. So, so like, it's, it's been almost, over a year yeah. since we've seen Weird and Bogle on this podcast. Welcome back. I did not miss them, no. honestly. So, yeah, they're back. They are plotting to capture the gang with the, the mirror demon. So what they do is... They reveal to us that they were the ones that sent the telegram. They, you know, they pretended to be Vincent, lured them to Marrakesh, and they have the mirror set up in their hotel room, but because the room's not ready yet, the maids are going in real quick to clean. Yeah. They're in there, and one of them's in the bathroom, cleaning the bathroom and everything, and the other one, I think it's just doing something, I think she's vacuuming. Yeah. And the mirror mistakes her as the mortal that he's trying to capture and eats Eats her. her. Well, and then also, can we talk about how mad the mirror demon got when he ate the maid and then he, like, appeared and he got pissed because Weird and Bogle messed up? And I was like, bro, you ate her. Like, you could have just not. Right. Well, I also just like that they had access to this room before the gang did, evidently. And the room hasn't even been cleaned. No. So, like... All around, you guys just should not have been in there. Well, They I mean, should have waited a little bit. I mean, like, if they were cleaning the room to get it ready for the gang, I get it. But also, like, unless every room has a mirror like that, that would have been removed. Yeah, you're right. Because, like, the maid service wouldn't, like, it would have Yeah, they wouldn't have left it in yeah. there. They wouldn't have moved the mirror. Yeah. Also, he knows who Scooby and the gang look like. Because he yells at Weird and Bogle because he needs Scooby-Doo. Later in the episode, he's just like, I need to capture them because they're the only ones that can put me back in the chest. Yeah. So, like, he knows who they are. So you're the idiot who mistook this maid as one of them. And that was his first fuck up. Because it was just like, had you not eaten the maid, then, like, you would have just been chilling. Yeah. And then the gang would have come into their room eventually. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. Then your plan would have worked. Instead, you eat the maid... And the gang, who's just waiting around for their room to be ready, they decide to go to the paranormal convention. Mm-hmm. So they're about to, you know, enter and see all the cool boots and everything. Shaggy's making fun of everybody because they look like a bunch of idiots, which they do. Do you see some of their costumes? Yeah. He did say, though, that he and Scooby would probably not fit in very well at a paranormal convention given, you know, what that is. But then Flim Flam said the most wild thing. It was just... I hate him so much. <laughs> so Shaggy says that he doesn't want to go anywhere that's de- that, you know where something is described as paranormal. To which Flim Flam responds that paranormal means a cult. <laughs> Incorrect, Flim Flam. <laughs> that, that that is not correct at all. I actually like 
pulled up the definition for paranormal just to be sure. Because you were Because like, I thought, I was like, wait a minute. Am I like in an alternate <laughs> universe right now where that doesn't mean the same thing? So no, I mean, Google says that it is denoting events or phenomena such as telekinesis or clairvoyance that are beyond the scope of normal scientific understanding. So yeah, uh, never, ever, ever has it meant a cult. cult. I think Flim Flam just... Flim Flam, you're full of shit. <laughs> I just, like, had to do a double take. I'm like, excuse me, wait, what? Wait, wait, excuse me, ma'am? Flim Flam, what? <laughs> so they continue into the convention. And they meet this, like, super weird redheaded dude. Uh, we find out later that his name is Sandy, but immediately I don't trust him. He was kind of sketch at first. Like, I kind of thought he had nefarious means yeah. for getting Scooby's autograph. Like, it turned out he didn't, but, like, the the whole time, he's just, he's a sketchy guy. And he's really annoying, too. Yes. He's got a really nerdy voice. He is just super geeky about the world-famous Scooby-Doo being here at this convention. Okay, you guys remember, like, in school when you would have, like, a weird hair day, and there was always that one kid with long hair, usually a girl, but um, they take, like, a bottle and they put it in their hair so that their hair would stand up straight. And then, like, they'd rubber band it off and then, like, a little bit of the hair would flop back over. That's exactly what this dude looked like. And he, he, I, he just looked so silly. I didn't like him. I didn't trust him. And, yeah, so we have to deal with him this episode. Yep. He does want Scooby's autograph. He gets it in a notebook. He has, like, Scooby put his paw like, on a thing of ink and puts it in the little book. And then, you know, he's off on his way. Scooby comes back with a big head. He's like, I'm a star. And then runs into a, like, pole. And Shaggy goes, yeah, a star klutz. (laughs) So Sandy, he goes off to meet a friend of his named Selma. Selma runs a crystal ball booth. And she's just fiddling with one of them, trying to get a transmission or something from someone. She also, she words ball as ball. Ball? She's like, my I didn't crystal that. ball. <laughs> and I, she always just said it weird. It weirded me out. Sandy wanted to brag to her about the fact that Scooby's there. And incidentally, a transmission comes in from Vincent Van Gogh on the crystal ball. Asking for Scooby. Yes. My question is, why isn't he just trying to call them on their crystal ball? You know, because they do have one. We don't see it in the episode. We don't see a lot of things in this episode. Yeah, and... I just thought it was kind of silly that, you know, we, they've mainly been using the crystal ball as their means of communication for Vincent in the past couple episodes. Mm-hmm. And then just suddenly they don't have it, and he's just calling this random one in the middle of nowhere, like, oh, hey. Hey. Can you point me in the direction of Scooby-Doo or anybody in his party? He was willing to speak to anyone. Yes. Sandy goes to try and find Scooby, and he does find the group. Something I kind of noticed, which was just weird, he calls behind them. Like, he's behind the group. Then he's just like, hey, Scooby, like, I, I've got a message from you for someone on a crystal ball. And it cuts to Daphne, who's continuing to walk and not look at him. Like, they're all still walking, and they, none of them have turned around. And she's like, hmm, I wonder who that message is from. Maybe we should see. But, like, no one ever turned around to actually look at Sandy. Yeah. And then it cuts out, and now we see Sandy has just joined the group. And they're walking. And they're continuing to walk. But, like, it didn't seem like they actually interacted with him at all. <laughs> like, if you put this on silent, it would look like you see Sandy trying to catch up with them. Then it zooms in on Daphne, continuing to walk, minding her own business. And now Sandy is just part of the group. It happens. Scrappy and Flim Flam get distracted by a booth for this item that's being sold called the Spook 2000. Yep. It is used for ghost catching purposes. The man is trying to sell it to Flim Flam for $4,000. Yeah. And um, Flim Flam instantly offers a buck 50. He says, let's split the difference. I'll give you a buck 50. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, it was stupid. And and Flim Flam continues to haggle with him up until, like, the next scene. Right. Um, so we'll talk about the scene real quick, and then we'll finish up with the vacuum spook. So Weird and Bogle are now carrying the mirror around the convention instead of leaving it in the room. Because, you know, he, they're trying to capture him. I just think it would be easier if they just left the mirror in the room. Yeah. Because they're eventually going to go to it, right? Like. I don't because they're just minding their own business. They're just trying to kill some time until their room is Yeah, ready. I literally have no idea. So they're trying to capture the gang with the mirror. 
uh, the gang do get brought back over to the crystal Selma. ball at Selma's booth. And they talk to Vincent. They discover that the telegram was not from him. And then he informs them that they need the amulet of Ishka Bibble mm-hmm. in order to capture the mirror demon. Uh, I also wanted to note that Selma had like a thousand crystal balls. Yes, she did. Well, they're probably just for sale. Like she's trying to sell them. Okay. That makes sense at a paranormal convention. I can see crystal balls being sold like that. I and evident- one. Well, evidently they work in this universe too. Like yeah, they're, I'm uh, down. They're a very common means of communication We need to get some people. so that like we can just crystal ball each other. That didn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it sounded better in your head than it did out loud. <laughs> and now it's immortal on this podcast. Like instead of FaceTime, I just want to crystal ball you. <laughs> We'll send crystal balls to, like, all of our audience so we can talk to them on crystal balls. Like, oh, hey! How are you today? <laughs> so, after they get this information about the amulet of Ishka Bibble, which we're not given any real information on, like, what it looks like, or what it does, or what Ishka Bibble is. <laughs> I looked up Ishka Bibble. It's a person. Oh, okay. From, like, the 1930s. I think he was, like, an entertainer or something, but I... Did he I... have an amulet? No. <laughs> And I also just lost interest real quick, so I closed the tab. <laughs> anyway, uh, so they just don't really have any information on what they are looking for when it comes to the Amulet of Ishka Bibble. They don't really even have any indication that it's here. No. You know? Which it was It was. But, well, not, <laughs> it not here. It was in, like, the bazaar, like, down the road. But Well, and we don't even know if it was really there, because that... Yeah, okay, we'll yeah, get we'll there. get to there. We'll get okay, to there. Okay, so anyway, so then this weird announcement comes over... The loudspeakers, and it just says, "Hey guys, just remember, uh, tonight we're gonna announce the uh, Ghost Catcher of the Year. Cool beans, bye." Selma and Sandy hear this, and they want to become the Ghost Catchers of the Year. And because they've heard from you know over here in the conversation with Vincent and Scooby and the gang that you know there's an evil spirit here at the convention, they're like, "Well, if we capture the the ghost, then we'll be the ones that get crowned as." you know, Ghost Catcher of the Year. Good plan, I guess. Okay. Works for it. Very opportunistic. They start walking around trying to find the ghost. I think it was Sandy who describes that if he was crowned as the Ghost Catcher of the Year, it would just be most decent. So decent. Very, very decent. I agree. Quite decent. Also, I noted while they were walking around that there was just an astrology booth. Yes, there was. Except it also looked like an Egyptian exhibit yeah. as well. So I don't really know what's going on there. But I was just like, astrology isn't paranormal. I also saw a sign. It just showed a man with um, a blindfold on. And it said ESP above it. <laughs> we need to find a paranormal convention and go. Okay. I want to witness one. We'll, we'll record a bunch of our findings and yeah. we'll bring it back here to talk about yeah. it. I don't really remember the events that led to this, but Scooby got sucked into the Vacu Spook 2000 that Flim Flam was trying to haggle with that other guy about. Yeah. And he gets, you know, released from it. You know, they, like, push him out of it. I think Flim Flam offered the man another um, 75 cents as yeah, the final he offer. He said, that's 75 cents and that's my final offer. Yes. When Scooby got, like, blown out of the Vacu Spook, he, like, crashed into the rest of the gang except for Flim Flam. And then they crash into Weird and Bogle in the mirror, and they just caused catastrophic damage to the convention. Somehow them, like, flying backwards, the entire convention was just in turmoil. It looked like a tornado went through the place, and I don't really know why. So then at that point, everybody's running away screaming, because, like, a tornado just happened. Well, there's an angry mob, too, that's chasing the gang. Yeah. And so then the guy who's selling the vacu spook... Uh, yells, take it, it's yours! Right, free! Yeah, it's free! And I'm like, wow, it went from $4,000 down to free. free. He didn't even just take the 75 cents and call it good. Like, come he on, like, man. Okay, he did say that he was probably going to go back to selling vacuum cleaners door to door. So at least he has a backup plan. Yeah. He doesn't have what it takes to take it at paranormal conventions. <laughs> no. Scooby and Shaggy run from the mob and they go and hide in their, their room. hotel room. Yeah. And... It was kind of unclear to me if they just knew this was their room or if they just ran into an open no, door. No, he had walked them to the room, I think. No, then... I don't think. They never interacted with the room before. Never. They were never in it. They were never at the door or anything. Okay. 
I know he told them 13. Yeah, he did tell them the number, but he didn't tell them, like, where it was. He never brought them to it. They never went to the room. This is the first Maybe time they they're interacting it. with the know. room. But when they get in there, the concierge and the maid are waiting inside because the maid is basically accusing them of having kidnapped her friend. And I'm like, um, no, excuse me, ma'am. Do you not remember that mirror that is incidentally not here now? That ate your friend? It ate your friend before your eyes. But it was Scooby and Shaggy. Yeah. But it was totally Scooby and Shaggy. Not to mention, in fact, this happened before they got into the room. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. No. Because I think the concierge's um, logic was that they got the key and then it the the you know the woman got eaten. But like, they wouldn't have been in the room also, if like, the maids were your, still in yeah, there cleaning check the room. Your security camera, bitch. Right. Like, also, how about we just not give you the key until your room is ready? Sounds like a plan. You know, I think that should be, like, a new policy for your hotel overall, yeah. sir. Um, Daphne comes in and also is, like, defending them, like, uh, no, we didn't. We didn't eat her. We didn't kidnap this woman. <laughs> I don't know who this is or why. I don't know but who like, she is, but, like, it wasn't me. The concierge says that he's going to hold them until the authorities arrive. And this is when Scrappy and Flim Flam, who have not entered the room yet, disguise themselves as detectives. And they are coming in to question everybody, and, you know, they're going to try and save the gang. Scrappy is... I don't remember what he said his name was, but he just said he's a detective. Flim Flam pulls out a notepad, and he's, like, just taking notes. And he goes up to the, the other maid, and he's just like, okay, ma'am. So, like, tell me what happened. And she's like, so I was in the bathroom cleaning the toilet, and he, and he says, just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. I'm like, are you insinuating she wasn't cleaning the toilets? <laughs> She does a shitty job at cleaning the toilets, evidently. Yeah, he was like, nah, it wasn't you. Wasn't <laughs> no, it you? wasn't. You fucking didn't touch them toilets. <laughs> they haven't been touched in two years. <laughs> so, Flim Flam has Scooby and Shaggy, like, go up against the wall because Scrappy's like, check them, Flim. So, he's, like, checking their pockets and, you know, just kind of patting them all down. He reaches into a back shirt pocket Yeah, of it was Shaggy's. super weird. Like, he reaches his hand inside Shaggy's shirt... Like, through a hole or something. Because there's evidently a pocket there. Pulled out a whole box of something. I don't know what that thing was. I almost thought it was a toaster oven. That's what it looked like. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I have to agree. But he did say that, you know, well, it looks like they did it. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm like, what? Okay. <laughs> they kidnapped the maid with this. With this, this toaster device. oven. And... Scrappy's just like, okay, sir, like, he's talking to the concierge. He's like, sir, you were really lucky. This gang was wanted in 27 states and half of the kennels in North America. And he tells them, like, okay, take them away. And, you know, they're going up the river. And that's when Scooby makes the comment that he can't swim, which yeah. is bullshit. Not true. You're a dog. Dogs can swim. Didn't he swim for Don Knotts in the Don Knotts episode? Yeah, he saved Don Knotts. <laughs> I'm over this. Anyway, <laughs> so as they're running out, Flim Flam, like, pops back into the room. And oh he's gosh. like, he goes, everything you just heard is a true story, but the names have been changed to, to protect, protect the, the ignorant. ignorant. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> this is one of those moments where this series just breaks the fourth wall unnecessarily oh my. and in the most bizarre way possible. This was the first episode that we didn't hear him say in the immortal words. Of the great confused one. You're right. I didn't even catch that. I honestly. feel, I feel gypped. This isn't a real 13 goes of Scooby Doo <laughs> episode. This isn't my flim flam. I don't even like my own flim flam. <laughs> hashtag not my flim flam. Also hashtag I don't like flim flam. <laughs> so my next note. His camels, so many angry camels. <laughs> I wrote, I wrote, angry camels. Also, a camel trying to make out with Scooby. So they're outside the hotel. They just like escaped, you know, the concierge with their whole authorities gag. They're making a game plan, like what they need to do next. What you know, they got to find that amulet of Ishka Bibble. They got to capture the ghost. Blah blah blah. But like as they're talking. In the background behind them, we're just seeing these angry camels just looking at them. And they're literally, like, two inches away from everyone's face. Right. Like, as close as you and I are to each other. Like, the camel's just, like... They're imagining us two inches away from each other's face now. <laughs> we actually are now, guys. You can't see it. You can't see it, but, but we, we are. are. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like... 
they're just chilling. And there's no real reason why. No. Like, they're not parked there like they were earlier with the mystery machine. They're just standing there. That's and it's the like... camel drop off. <laughs> But you're right. The camel, the one camel, did make out with Scooby because she evidently just really likes him. I think that's also when one of the camels said something along the lines of like, "I knew I should have stayed at the Ritz." Sir, you are not staying anywhere. <laughs> sir, you're a camel. You're a camel. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag, sir, you are a camel. <laughs> so they decide to go to this bazaar that's down the street that Flim Flam knows about because, of course, he does. Yeah. And when they get there. Everybody Everybody is selling amulets. Everybody. And Flim Flam looks around. Okay, so keep in mind, everyone is selling amulets. Flim Flam looks around and goes, so does this place sell amulets or what? (laughs) And all of a sudden we get this creepy guy who peeks his head out. Oh, I forgot one thing I wanted to say. Okay. Um, So... When they first get there, too, we also see Selma and Sandy, and they see the the mirror, and it's floating. Oh, yeah. Because they're still looking for the evil spirit, so they can be crowned as the ghost catchers of the year. And um, they decide to follow it, because they think it's possessed. I so mean... So, there's that. Could be. But, anyway. Uh, so, then this creepy guy pokes his head out, and he goes, hey, you need an amulet? You looking for an amulet? <laughs> it's like drugs. <laughs> looking for drugs. You look straight. So, Daphne... Was so weird about this. So, like, okay, the guy, for one, is weird. Yeah. But Daphne responds, what? Maybe. Maybe. That was such a weird response. Like, yes, Daphne, you are looking for one. (laughs) Like, if he doesn't have the one you want, see if he can refer you to somebody. To someone, yeah. So, yeah, he hands her this amulet, which is, incidentally, the amulet of Ishkabibble. And so then she looks at it, and she's like, I can't read it. It's in some foreign language. How much do you want for it? And he responds, only your happiness. Yeah. I'm like, excuse me? And then <laughs> she's like, do you know what this says? And then he runs away. It was just like, the man oh. ran away. He ran, just through the crowd, just gone. And we were like, okay, Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Only your happiness. That's what this costs. I don't know. What was the point? Don't I don't know. understand. <laughs> so weird and bogle. They have put the mirror backstage on this, I guess it's this presentation area of the bazaar. Yeah. They lure all the guys onto the stage to, yeah. you know, do a performance. Something I noted that was just kind of funny was that, like, behind Scooby, Scrappy... Shaggy and Flim Flam, there's just these two men that are just drawn into the background. A wizard and a strong man. A, a man who looks like a wizard, and then there's just this strong man looking dude who's, he's got his hands on his hips, and he's really, really confident. Yeah. I'm really happy for both of them. I'm glad that they're friends. Yeah. You know, like, they're just hanging That's out. That's just us. A wizard and a strong man. Yeah. Which one of us is which? <laughs> Neither of us is the strong man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they begin singing. I'm really sick of the singing in this show. Okay, so I took two notes during it, and I said, I hate the singing. And then my second one is because they're singing, and he says something about give them the old flim flam. Yeah. I want to know what that means. Well, you know how flim flam is like, you know, like, it means like con artistry, and like... So give them... We talked about this before, Yeah. flim flam's meaning, yeah. Okay. So I guess, I don't know. I don't really know. Give them the old con. All I know is the song was not good. No, it's They don't sound good. And I'm also just tired of songs in this series. It's such a weird thing for this series to have. Yeah. Like, if they were trying to make this as, like, a unconventional, darker Scooby-Doo series. And then they just randomly and then they throw just, music. Right. Like, in the, the Maldor episode, when they sang Row Your Boat, and they had the lyrics yeah. on the bottom of the screen. Thankfully, this one didn't have that. But, like... If it did, I would have cried. <laughs> I think I would have actually cried. It was just weird. Like, I don't like it. It's always weirdly placed in the episode. It's just giving me mixed messages on what this show is trying yeah. to be, I guess. Um. So then they run off the stage. They're running away from everyone. Well, the mirror attacks. That's what happened. Yeah, the mirror attacks. And for some reason... Oh, you know what it was. Selma and Sandy were on the trail of the mirror earlier. And they are, like, trying to capture it with a fishing net. Yeah. So they go to attack the mirror when the demon, like, actually comes out of the mirror for the first time. So this is the first time we've actually seen its full body. It looks malnourished. That's what you described it as earlier. And 
they just go charging at it with this fishing net, and it does eat them. And so they're gone. Yeah, and the rest of the gang just like you know freak out, and like it kind of just cut like you know to, like to a commercial. The screen went black, and when it returns, now Weird Bogle and the demon are like elsewhere. Like they left. Yeah. Like oh they fail so let's get away. Fair. Um. And the demon's pissed still because he hasn't gotten the mortals, the only ones who can return to the chest. My thing is, like, why is that your main vendetta is to, you know, eat them? Like, I get that you're trying to prevent ever having to go back into the chest, but they never would have known where you were had you not put Weird and Bogle up to this whole plot of bringing them to Marrakesh to capture you. Yeah, I don't know. It's a a Jonathan Johnson. Yeah. It's a Jonathan Johnson. And honestly, even if they had just sent a telegram saying like hey there's a paranormal convention like why don't you come to it and then he could have attacked them then that would have been so left field they wouldn't have expected it but they came like prepared to fight a ghost right yeah because like in the episode with um maldor they weren't necessarily on the trail to find maldor they just got let know by vincent they're like oh hey by the way you're near one of them yeah maldor was kind of just acting out in self-defense like Get the fuck away from me. Yeah. He was like, I'm just trying to live my life. Please right. just go away. And no, and this one just lured them to Marrakesh. This it's one like, actually dude. is an asshole evil guy. Like. Whatever. I don't know. But anyway, so they all start hiding. And Daphne comes up and she's like, hello. And then everybody pops out. They decide to go back to the hotel because now they need the vacuum spook that. Flim Flam stole from that man. Yeah. In order to capture the ghost. Hey, he got it for free. Okay, stole. Yeah. Okay, you're <laughs> right, you're right. He did not steal it. He might as well have, though. But they need the vacuum spook in order to capture the ghost. My thing is, like, so what happened to the chest? Yeah, where's the chest? Does the chest not... Oh, you know what? Fine. Don't even... No crystal ball, no chest. It, it's fine. No immortal words from the confused one. Like, it's fine. This, it, this is fine. Mm-hmm. Everything is fine. You're making it harder than it needs yeah. to be. <laughs> so they do go back to the hotel. When they get in there, they're trying to, like, stay low key and, like, not get caught by that concierge. They go into the room. It's dark. And, like, Daphne tells Shaggy not to let anybody in on the fact that the concierge is coming. Shaggy then gives that responsibility to Scrappy. Scrappy then gives that kind of responsibility to Scooby. And then Scooby talks right to the concierge. Because, of course. Yeah. He evidently had, like, okay, so he's like, you didn't think that you could get away from me, huh? And then he just claps his hands. And then these just two strongmen who evidently work for the hotel, they're already in the room. Yeah. And I'm like, so you guys have just been waiting. Yeah, they were. They were just like. They're going to come back. Right. And, uh, yeah, so they try to capture them. They get out of it because, okay, so Flim Flam did his whole, like, crying bit like he's done in past episodes. Oh, my God, but this one he actually lost it. And I was laughing because of the things he said. (laughs) He told them that he needs to be able to go to sanitation school and that he also needs money to buy Scrappy some stilts. Yeah. (laughs) That that part got to me. I'm like, Scrappy <laughs> needs stilts. So then they pretend, because the clock... Are you going to buy me stilts? <laughs> you need stilts. So this grandfather clock that's just also chilling in the room, it strikes midnight. And they're like, oh, well, hey, it's Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. And they just go all about that. They start singing again. Yep. <laughs> they escape. The concierge realizes that it's June. Oops. Uh, this concierge needs to be fired because he's been duped twice now. Yes. He's not doing his job great at all. No. And he and the strong men decide to chase the gang throughout the hotel. Scrappy and Flim Flam say that they are going to split from the group so they can go and try and get the vacuum spook still. Mm -hmm. So Daphne, Scooby, and Shaggy continue to run into the hotel shops or whatever. The concierge and the strongman are right behind them. And then suddenly that camel that's in love with Scooby also shows up. And starts, like, making kissy faces and, like, yelling hey or something. Like, it was so weird. I hated it. Why were you there? It's I fine. actually hate that camel. Me too. I never thought that I would ever hate a camel. No, but I hate that I one. hate this one. 
so Scooby and Shaggy go into this, like, I guess, like a dress store or something, and Bogle and Weird pop up. They're in disguise as, like, saleswomen there, and they tell them that they're, like, having a huge sale and super low prices on everything, and shows Scooby a price tag for one of the dresses being $50,000, to which Scooby responds, that seems reasonable. It was a really nice dress. Yeah, and I also wish that $50,000 was reasonable to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He's famous. He is famous. But they also live out of a van. So, so they save a lot of money. <laughs> they save a lot of money. <laughs> um, no, they don't. Have you ever listened to Scooby-Doo's or Scooby-Don'ts with their stat count? They owe so much money to everything. That's why they're always on the run. <laughs> they're not on a road trip. They're on, a, <laughs> they're on the run from the authorities. Yeah. So they are, like, led back into this dressing room and put in these dresses. And Scooby and Shaggy are, like, really contemplating buying these dresses. Yeah, they are. Scooby's like, is it just me? Like, does this look okay? Or is it, like, is it just me? And Shaggy's just like, I think it brings out your eyes. Yeah. Like, they're really considering buying these dresses. I'm really happy that they aren't so insecure about their masculinity to where they don't feel they can try on dresses. Yeah. Or considering... You know, just having fashion senses that aren't cis normative. Yeah. No, I loved it. He he's a dog, so like he should be able to wear whatever he wants to. Exactly. And also anybody should be able to wear whatever they want <laughs> Not to. Just Scooby. Not just dogs, but like everybody. <laughs> so the mirror <laughs> Don't put your like sex or your uh, cis straight clothes <laughs> on your dog like it's a dog. And also, if a boy wants to wear a dress, he can, too. Leave Shaggy alone. So, anyway. <laughs> but it turns out the mirror that they're looking in is the the mirror demon. And Daphne, like, runs into and she's like, guys, stop. <laughs> Good work, Daphne. Good job. Um, but the mirror does end up eating all of them. Which, keep in mind that they've been looking in this mirror for a good, like, ten minutes. The mirror demon could have just zapped and killed them. He was just chilling, because he also thought they looked great. Yeah. Like, he didn't want to ruin he it He wanted them. to see what was going to happen. He was being supportive of their lifestyle. Because the whole thing is, though, we've seen him zap other items and then turn to, like, ash. Yes. Yeah, he so, did like, it to a nightstand in yeah. the hotel room. So... Mm. He was just chilling. Just chilling. He could have turned both of them into ash. Then when Daphne came running in, turned her into ash. And then you're done. Because, like, Scrappy and Flim Flim can't do shit. He was just letting them enjoy the moment. Well, that's his second fuck up of the day. Guess so. They get sucked into, um, it's it's the mirror world. So, like, it looks like he's eating them when really they're just getting transported into this world inside of the mirror. And it's, like, upside down, sideways. I just wrote the mirror world is a fucking trip. Everything's upside down and sideways and crazy. It, like, reminded me of, like, an M.C. Escher painting, but, like, yeah, worse. Like, <laughs> when, when, like, at one point, like, Shaggy starts walking backwards and he gets smaller. And then when Scooby walks towards... Shaggy, he gets bigger. And Daphne's just chilling next yeah, to them. Yeah, like, Daphne's just, like, medium. Like, it, it's... <sighs> they also find Sandy and Sama, who are chilling in these discs. Well, okay, so, like, at one, when they're all standing there, the mirror demon shows up, says something, and then, like, drops the floor from underneath them, and they fall onto these discs, and that's where we see Sandy and Salma. And also... Like, this world all around is just so abstract and weird, and, like, they've got parts of their bodies sticking out of discs in one place, and then they're appearing in other places. Yeah. Scooby fell onto, I think, Sandy at one yeah. point. Like, it was really confusing. Yeah. And that's when Daphne realizes that she still has the, the amulet of Ishkabibble. So she pulls out the amulet, and the mirror demon's just like, no! Basically, he's <laughs> like, put that down. You don't You don't need that. You don't need that. It turns out that the, the foreign-looking writing that's on the amulet that Daphne couldn't read was actually just writing in reverse. And now that they're in the mirror world, she can read it. Yeah. I told you that before we actually discovered too. what it was because I saw the writing and like we saw it so briefly, but I'm like, that's just backwards. <laughs> I can see it. Daphne. Daphne, please. Daphne. <laughs> uh, so then... I didn't write down what the actual incantation was that was it on was the amulet. was something like mirror, mirror, let us out. Something about a portal for this poor mortal. That sounds correct. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. Verbatim. Yep. 
<laughs> so yeah, they, they read it and then the whole world just starts spiraling and they get sucked into a new portal and out of the mirror. They get yeah, they pop up out of the mirror. So it was a bummer because I kinda wanted to explore this world a bit more. I want to talk about that when we're doing our final thoughts and okay. like our ratings, because yeah, I also kind of agree with that. Something you caught was how Sama and Sandy just appear in the scene. So yeah, we so like, see them physically get out of the mirror with the rest of the group. And then the rest of the group starts running. And then all of a sudden, Sandy appears and then Selma appears right after. And they just like pop into the middle of the group and they're running. It's like for the first like millisecond of the scene, the animators forgot they were supposed to be in the group. Yeah. So then they're like, oh shit, we can't put them there anymore because the, like the deadline's already been met. Let's just put them here and nobody will notice. Yeah. We noticed. We noticed. So, you know, they all just start running away. And that's when Scrappy and Flim Flam, they pop in the room disguised as maids, maids. for reasons. And they have the vacuum spook now. They use the vacuum spook to suck the mirror demon out of the mirror. And now he's just trapped in that little encasing where Scooby was earlier when he got sucked into the vacuum spook. Yeah. Uh, Weird and Bogle kind of freak out. They're like, okay, we got to get out of here. Like, man, dip. Bye. They sucked up the boss. We gotta go. Exactly. So they just kind of dip. Then all of a sudden the mirror dissolves. Yes. So it kind of like sparkles for a second. It melts. And then it just becomes that maid that got sucked into it at the beginning of the episode. Who we never once saw in the mirror world. No. We were wondering that the entire time. Like, did the maid get forgotten? Like, like, the maid's just dead. They made such a big deal about this maid, but like... That's they were about fine. to get arrested for her yeah. kidnapping. And they just forgot to talk about her forgot. in the world. It's fine. So later that night, they... And I don't know what time... Is it supposed to be like 1 a.m. now? Because <laughs> wasn't it midnight earlier? It's, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what time it is anymore. Anyway, they go to announce the Ghost Catcher of the Year. And the man that appears on stage to award the trophy turns out to be the same man that gave Daphne the amulet of Ishkabibble earlier in the episode. Turns out that the man was Vincent Van Gogh in disguise. Which just makes that whole scene weirder. Doesn't it? Like, Doesn't Vincent, it? you know them. And Vincent's excuse was that he didn't want to scare the ghost away. Yeah, he and said that he didn't want things, to let them on to the fact that he was there. Two things. Vincent, you ain't shit anymore. Like... They're not scared of Vincent. They're scared of Scooby because Scooby's the one that has to put him back in the back. So, like, Vincent, if you were there, I wouldn't have scared anybody. Vincent, yeah, exactly. Vincent cannot put them back in the chest. So Only like, Scooby and, I guess, the rest of the group by association can know. put them back in. Vincent has no power over them. No. He's powerful. Yeah. But he cannot do anything to the 13. But, also... It was so low key how he talked to Daphne. Yeah. When he gave her the inlet, he could just have just been like, happiness. "That was fucking." Weird. <laughs> I'm sorry, Vincent. I don't know where you pulled that from, but it you, needs to stop. You could have just been like, "Daphne, it's me, Vincent." Yeah. Here's the amulet like, you need. Daphne, it's me, Vincent. You just don't blow my cover, but this is the amulet I told you about earlier. Here you go. Like. Like, and I'm also wondering, where was he when he was trying to call them on the crystal ball earlier in the episode? He was on his magic flying carpet. On the carpet that he used in the last yeah. episode we watched. Flying over to him. So I, I don't know. I don't know how. I, I hate all of that. Well, so then, of course, uh, Scooby gets the ghost catching trophy. Which looks like shit. Did you see that trophy? I did. Uh, but I also want to talk about how Scooby doesn't deserve it. Because from... <laughs> Go on. <laughs> because Flim Flam caught the ghost. So Flim Flam goes up to accept and, the trophy. And, and Daphne saved everybody from the mirror world. Yeah. Like Scooby did like, nothing. Scooby didn't do anything. So then, so Flim Flam goes to accept the trophy because he's really excited. And he's like, I'd like to thank all the little people. And everybody runs up and they're like, hey, dude, that's for Scooby. And I'm just sitting there like, but why? <laughs> Scooby didn't do anything. Neither did the Scooby's little people. Scooby's also but... a dog. Like, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that was, that was, Flim Flim got gypped. After they get the trophy, they, they all sing. decide to break out into song like they did earlier. They're singing the same Flim Flam song, and Daphne's joined in the group now, too. Yeah, Joy. And, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So happy. So they're just singing, and my last note is just the episode ends with Flim Flam singing that song, and they teleport onto a camel, 
and it's also daytime now. They're still in their outfits that they were wearing for the song. And that camel happens to be the camel that's in love with Scooby. She yeah. kisses Scooby, and Scooby says Scooby Dooby Doo. And it ends. And the episode ends. My last note is in all caps, and it says that fucking camel again. Reflections in a ghoulish eye. Shannon, what was your rating for this episode on the Scooby Snackometer? I gave it a two. Okay. I, I didn't like it. Elaborate. There was an, there, it, it wasn't a normal episode. It kind of just sucked all around. The transition sucked. Just everything sucked. They didn't have the crystal ball. They didn't have the chest. We didn't get the immortal words of the confused one. Like, it was just a weird-ass song in the middle of it. Like, it just, all around this episode, sucked. And especially, okay, so, like, compared to, like, the last episodes we've watched for this series. I mean, the last episodes, if I could go back and, like, re-rate them, I would rate them a bit higher. Because I didn't... Just because of this one. Yeah. But, I mean... Like, the... And, as we said before, these episodes are consistently getting worse. So I didn't have much hope going into this one. But, like, these past episodes were still, like, decent. They still had, like, a little bit, I don't want to say charm, but, like, we still laughed and had fun. Because I think the last episode still got, like, an above neutral rating. Like, I think we still gave it a positive rating. Yeah. I think it was, like, 5.5, but that's still pretty positive for us. Yeah. For us? uh, I mean, come on. No, it is. But, um, so I just, I didn't like it. I have to agree with you. I gave it a three myself, but I still echo the same points that you did. The transitions and the animation was really weird in this episode, given what we saw, like, in... Okay, I keep going back to the first episode of the series, because I think that the first episode set our hopes so high Mm -hmm. for what this series was going to bring us, and I was... I feel like I was lied to. Yeah. (laughs) You know? I loved that episode so much. And And I I loved watching it. It was a fun time to talk about. And now, I'm like... Did the, just all the main people who made that episode great just quit? Yeah, they just <laughs> they left. They all left. You are correct in the statement that, you know, Flim Flam didn't say his trademark quote. We're missing the crystal ball that they usually use. The, the chest of demons is also not really a power play in this episode. And the logic behind this demon all around, I just, I thought it was a Jonathan Johnson. Yeah. It did not... If he had just lied low and not done anything, which I'm feeling is the case for all of these ghosts, except for Maldor, because Maldor was kind of minding his own business, I think. But, like, if they just mind their own business and go about their usual day, like, the gang is not going to find them. No. You know? And the gang is kind of looking, but not really. Well, they wouldn't have gone to Marrakesh if they had not gotten that telegram from Weird and Bogle. Also, Weird and Bogle were in this episode randomly because we haven't seen them for the last two episodes we reviewed from this series because they've been over there helping the 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 mirror mirror demon demon. yeah yeah i thought it was a very disappointing episode given what we've seen before it in the same series yeah because we're watching this in chronological order based on their release and also i've never seen this series right um, and I, I don't remember any of the episodes, honestly. So, it, like, fresh eyes on this all around. I'm just not happy. No, not I impressed. I think the, the first episode lied to us. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so, I'm giving it a three. You gave it a two. We're giving Reflections and a Ghoulish Eye a 2.5 out of 10 on the Scooby Snackometer. It feels about right. I agree. So, I have two fun facts for you guys today. Because I kind of just skimped out on a fun fact last week. It happens. It did. So, I got two fun facts for this episode in particular for you. One being that there was no chest of demons in the episode. But further on that, it's actually the only episode in the series where we don't see the ghost that they capture actually be put in the chest in the conclusion of the episode. He got away. Like, like can can we just assume that happened? Like, right? But also, a weird thing. I'm bringing it up just because I've seen it on Scoobypedia and Wikipedia. It's on Wikipedia's article for this episode, too. So I don't know where this information is coming from. And I would really like your guys' input if you can maybe even, you know, solve this mystery for us. So if you look on the Scoobypedia or Wikipedia pages for this episode, being, again, Reflections in a Ghoulish Eye, the villain, the ghost, is named the Reflector Spectre. That name was never once used in this episode. We never heard it. 
No. None of the characters ever referred to the ghost, nor did the ghost ever refer to himself as the Reflector Spectre. In episode, as well as elsewhere on those same articles, he's described as the Mirror Demon, which I think is more appropriate. Mm -hmm. I even looked at the the monster profile for each of the 13 ghosts in the, the new Scooby-Doo encyclopedia that came out last year. And in that one, he's listed as the Mirror Demon. So I don't really know where Reflector Spectre is coming from. It's just an interesting point I wanted to bring up because it's on the internet. And I would love to hear your guys' responses to that if you could solve that mystery for me. Yeah. Not really a fun fact. More like a chore. <laughs> like Solve this mystery I just, for us. I just gave our audience homework. <laughs> But it's fun homework, at least. I, I guess. So, moving on from that, next week we will be watching an episode from a pup named Scooby-Doo. Shannon, would you like to randomize what episode we'll be watching next week? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Next week, we will be watching The Sludge Monster from the Earth's Core. Ooh. Spooky. <laughs> this is the second episode of the Pup Named Scooby-Doo series, fun fact. The premise for this episode is coming from Scoobypedia. The Coolsville Bank is robbed, and the bank's janitor reports that he saw the sludge monster from the Earth's Core in the vault that was responsible for the theft. However... Nobody believes him except for the Scooby-Doo Detective Agency, who then proceed to try to find the monster and solve the mystery. The monster is later seen wandering around Scooby's giant doghouse. Dun-dun-dun. Should be an interesting one. I'm excited for it. I'm excited. I love a pup named Scooby-Doo. So that will be our episode next week. In Scooby-Doo news, I got whiff of this information yesterday from a friend of mine who collects the Scooby-Doo Pop Funkos. Mm -hmm. um, we have mentioned the Werewolf Pop Funko and, like, the Captain Color Pop Funko. Now there is going to be a flocked purple Scooby-Doo Pop Funko coming from what we believe is going to be Box Lunch again, like last year when they released the orange one. I believe it's just going to be the same thing where it's with that Do Good Scooby-Doo campaign that they started last year. Yeah. Um, some of the money is going to go to a nonprofit organization or something like that. Not really, I, I can't really talk about it in detail because there's not a lot of details on it yet. Um, if you go on like Instagram and you search Scooby Doo, like hashtag Scooby Doo, it's all over that hashtag. You'll see it. So if you guys want a picture of it, you can find it there. I might share a picture of it on Twitter too. But yeah, look out for that. I will definitely be updating you guys when it's released because I plan to get one and you should too. <laughs> <laughs> If you'd like to talk to us about that Scooby-Doo Pop Funko, or the episode we reviewed today, or the episode we were going to review next week, or anything Scooby-Doo related for that matter, you can find us online. We're on Facebook at That Kirby Scoobcast, Twitter at Kirby Scoobcast, and Tumblr at That Kirby Scoobcast. Also feel free to shoot us an email at thatgroovyscoobcast at gmail.com, or check out our website, www.thatgroovyscoobcast.com. And with that, we hope that you enjoyed that Groovy Scoobcast. Come back next week for a Scooby Snack Filled Time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.